this evening rather than offering evening prayers as we normally do on Wednesday what we're making available on our social media is a preparatory piece for our creation to zoom meeting on Saturday tonight uh, as we make this video available we're also having our creation zoom one meeting which talks about the beauty of the environment around St Paul's Church, about the gardens, the animals, and the care that we have for our environment. But our Zoom Creation 2 meeting is about creativity stemming from the human heart. And the preparatory interview that will follow my introduction now is with the artist Lily Corbett Gale, who is a new member of St Paul's community, uh, but who very kindly offered to share her own artistic formation and her own artistic expression with our community on a Zoom meeting following my interview of her, which is shared on social media. I do hope you enjoy it and will join us on Saturday, the 3rd of October, for the Zoom meeting. Lily, thank you so much for being willing to record this little interview uh, to help the people who will be joining us on Zoom on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was so thrilled last week after I came to visit you uh, when you made the kind offer of giving something creative to our creation week uh, and I became fascinated by what you told me about the spiritual dimension of the art which you have been trained in and which you yourself have learnt and have practiced and passed on as a teacher. Mm -hmm. I was very thrilled by it, especially what you told me about your own formation being led by a Royal Academician whose name is Cecil Collins. And I wonder whether you just start by telling us what you told me about how you came to be under the guidance and inspiration of Cecil. Well, it, um, it actually began, um, I worked as a picture restorer for many years and we were sent a painting of, a, of an angel and it was in white and yellow, beautiful angel, and sent by a firm called Abbott and Holdo who used to be in Barnes and I cleaned it and I'd never heard of Cecil and I I saw his name and I, 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 I looked up and I saw that there were some of his paintings in the Tate. Now this painting was about £350 and at the time, this is like the early 1970s, oh. it's about 1973 yeah. or 4, and I thought, well I just you know can't really afford this. So I cleaned it, varnished it, and it was t collected and taken back to the uh, firm. And then... In 1976, in the spring of 1976, I was having a chat with an actor called Peter Bowles in the Chelsea Arts Club in, in what used to be the ladies' bar. And somehow we got on to the subject of Cecil Collins and Peter um, has collected Cecil's paintings oh. for a long time. And um, so he told me, oh, you know, he'd heard about The Vision of the Fool, the essay that Cecil wrote in the war in 1944. It was published. And um, he said he'd gone in search of it, couldn't find it, gone to the British Museum and uh, found a copy, read it, and felt el elated for a week. It, it really spoke to him. And I think that's when he probably started collecting Cecil's work. Oh. And... Uh, so uh, at the time, I was um, doing many acting classes at the City Lit. Right. Um, I was Antonio in The Merchant of Venice when I was 11 years old at St. Peter's School in Victoria. Yeah. 
and I, I never really got over it. No. Uh, and when I left, they gave me a book on, you know, how to be an actor, actress. And uh, because I've got quite a strong voice, and or had. And um, anyway, so that always played with me. And and then I went to the city lit and did all these acting classes. And um, but then when I heard about Cecil, and I I saw that Cecil had a class, a life class at the city lit. So that was in 1976, and so I, um, well what happened was that I signed up for his class and left all the other classes, including yoga, <laughs> and, um, and including uh, acting. All the acting classes, <laughs> I just left them, and I joined his class, and the first day that I went, Actually, I think the model hadn't turned up. We were working from a plant. Oh. And I walked into the class, and Cecil sat by the door, and all the students were in a sort of um, horseshoe, mm. and he was at the back. And what I noticed really wasn't him on that first day. I noticed, that I thought, my gosh, they're using quill pens, reed pens, Chinese brushes, charcoal, conte. Mm. They're working with two hands. Mm. They're holding the instruments in different ways. Mm. And um, so Cecil sat at the back and he gave instructions. And so I worked away and I was there in the morning and then I was there in the afternoon. And it was all marvellous. Mm. And um, at the end of the day, he came up to me and he said, oh, you work well, he said. Hello. Anyway, as time went by, I noticed him more mm. and realised uh, what a... What a very interesting teacher he was, and it, I found it such a relief to be able to express myself silently with drawing. Mm. With it was a, high, a class that was highly concentrated on technique, mm. but also orientation came into it, mm. coming into yourself, connecting with your centre, mm. and and then working. So we would sit with our eyes closed and focus and breathe and and then start working mm -hmm. and and it was mostly uh, from the model mm -hmm. and um, based based on technique also with music and movement sometimes because uh, when you respond to to, to music or song um, in your body, um, those, the more movements you can cultivate in yourself, um, the more those movements will come into your drawing. I see. Because our whole body is the instrument. It's not just um, mm. the eyes and your hand. Mm. It is your whole body. And, and the more you are focused and centered in your body mm. and centered, so in a way to sit in a centered position, you can be completely relaxed and yet focused. Yeah, I remember you saying that, and this reminded me, obviously made a connection with my own religious liturgical practice, um, you know, which is very definitely inside me, part of me, um, that when you would come into the class, all those uh, instruments that you were going to use, yes. you would honour them, you would make a reverence of some sort. Yes. Occasionally, um, Cecil would say, um, and it was actually at the beginning of a series mm. of classes, we would lay each instrument on the paper in front of us. Um, we would bow to the instruments, we would bow to each other, yeah. and we would bow to the model. Yeah. And uh, this is showing respect for all. Yeah. And also, um, he, he makes, you, you, we are, have become aware that we have a certain space around each of us. Yes. That is like the space that we inhabit. And we respect that space in others, and we respect it mm. also in ourselves to to come into oneself, in into that peace and harmony. In fact, I shall I say that quote, or later? Maybe later. Later. Yes. Yeah. One of Cecil's. Yes. What Cecil had to say about. That's right. I remember you telling. Coming me. into connection with your source. And I remember you telling me 
that one of the principal things that he emphasised was empathy yes. uh, as a medium yes. to express oneself but also to engage with the world outside you. Absolutely. It's, yeah. us, it's completely important. How does the model feel? Yes. How do you feel? Mm. How are you within the class? How is the feeling in the class? Yes. The whole working together or working with maybe the everyone holding the, the Chinese brush in the left hand um, and the quill pen in the right and doing a conversation between the two. Isn't and we're all working at the same time, having yeah. been given that instruction. Yeah. And um, but empathy is high. In in you'll find in, in modern academic drawing, there are certain artists who do plumb lines and they do measurement. Mm. You can't really the render the human form to a series of measurements. No. Um, it's it's about feeling. Huh. It's about how we naturally we, we were learning through technique yeah. to learn how we individually draw. We're not going to measure. Mm. Now um, that, we're going that, to respond. That's very interesting because you know I don't have any artistic training, though I did actually do pottery at school, which I rather enjoyed and wasn't bad at in the few little bits and pieces I made. But later, what I became interested in in art history was um, in when I was doing a degree in classics was um, Greek and Roman sculpture, right. where actually the measurement and the proportions yes. are very distinctly measured. Yes. The famous uh, Polyclitean uh, statue, which is called Canon. The mm. canon, ah. because it sets up the um, uh, proportions yes. of what the L, the, the forearm should yes. be to yes. the foreleg, and so on and so forth. But one could say that that was particularly like basic, which was building towards more freedom and more responsiveness to how things actually are. Well, in in some respects, that's all very profound, and it's it's a path in itself. Yes. Um, and in, for example, how we have the golden mean yeah. um, between here and here yes. and here yes. and throughout our body. Yes. And that all relates, I think, to that system of measurement. Yeah. Um, for example, Egyptian art. I find Egyptian art very profound because there is actually, um, it's, it's not a photographic image of the body, is it? No. It's the, a transition has been made. Mm. And so there, 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 there's a particular style, a particular stylization in Egyptian sculpture, yes. for example, yes. and the painting. Which of course got handed on to early, what we call archaic uh, Greek sculpture actually. Yes. Very, very influenced by the standing positions of Egyptian sculpture. Yes. Uh, so they did pass that through. That's it. But also the Etruscan, uh, I find Etruscan art quite beautiful. So do I. I really do because yeah. there's a certain lengthening. There, yes, there is. It's more it's, emotional. Yes. <laughs> a lot more yes. emotional than and, Greek And art. you see, so that, well, you know, you can't really compare that world to the world of modern academic no. No. drawing and painting. You, yeah. you, can't, you, you can't compare modern academic to the Renaissance, even. No. There's a transition in the Renaissance. Mm. There's a certain beauty, a certain stylization. Mm. It is not like a photograph. No, you, no, absolutely. There's a quality of feeling, yeah. isn't there? There, um, there is, there is. And I, I'm aware that we're having another conversation different from the one we had last week. Yes, we <laughs> but that's how we are. And so our watchers and listeners will just and, have to get used to yes. it. I don't also, though, want to criticise modern academic no. because that's a path in its own. Yes. And very fine work can come from it. Of course. And everybody has to find their own artistic path as yes. they have to find their own spiritual path. Yes. And you mentioned that Peter Bowles, interesting, I didn't know that he was a profound man. I think I only ever saw him in that uh, to the man of Born, to the man of Born with Penelope Keith, yeah. in which he rather postured as a person without much yes, uh, emotional empathy know, uh, yeah. or, or so on. However, he clearly had. And so 
um, you said he he was keen to see Cecil's book, um, The Vision of the Fool. Yes. And you said that a, a kind of key understanding of Cecil's paintings is in the dual figure of the angel and the, uh, the fool. Yes. The angel and the fool being in somehow dialogue, is that right? Well, um, the, in a way they are different archetypes, I think. And Cecil um, regarded um, the fool, well the fool is purity of consciousness, it's seeing with a virginity of sight. And you mentioned he once painted the fool walking with a child. Yes, and I can show the, you with a hand. That. Yes, because yeah. the, the fool is so close to the consciousness, the purity of a child's yeah. vision. Yeah. And so they can walk hand in hand. Yeah. But the fool also has great wisdom <laughs> and and um, because the fool is always experiencing anew, he doesn't label so there's nothing old and labelled, if you know what I mean. Yes. It's, it's always seen for the first time. So the great joy of waking up each morning, if one could only be this oneself and have more full consciousness, would be to see my beautiful tree afresh every morning. Yeah. And I, maybe it's possible. Yeah. You know, if yes. one really sees the tree, the bush, the flowers, you know, human mm. beings. Mm. To and see a friend yeah. anew for the first time every time you yeah. meet them. Yeah. And then what? how does the angel speak to that? Well, the angel, my goodness, I think, I think the angel, Cecil used to say about the angel was that we don't really see them because he called them winged thoughts of the divine mind. Yes. And so they, they, those thoughts are so fast mm -hmm. that we actually don't physically see uh -huh. the material aspect of them. Mm. Um, I, in a way, I'm feeling that the angel is very much linked to the eye of the heart. Right. So that is the link with the fool, because the eye of the heart is the eye seen with empathy, empathy mm. seen with love. Mm. Um, the eye is, 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 is focused, mm. because, you know, we see through the eyes, not with the eyes. Yeah. We're not, you know, saying, oh, I know what that is, I know what that is. Mm. We, we are receiving, if we mm. can learn to receive. And that's central, and receive. central to how you then go on to represent something in painting. Because it's yes. not what you, and I remember you saying this to me last week, it's not just what you see in a model or a tree or a flower, it's what your eye of the heart sees. Yes. To some extent to see, of yes. how you're going to express it. I think to see through feeling, to see to see with love. Yeah. Because the class was about love of the instruments. Yeah. I mean we would literally also um, pick up pick up the quill mm. and kiss it. Oh beautiful. And the brush and the pencils. Yes. And make a contact and 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 um, so that so that really there's a respect and a love. I mean, the, the class was about love, it was the path of love. Yeah. And you formed a very close friendship with Cecil and his wife, didn't you? I did, well, I mean, Elizabeth, um, she used to come to the class in the 70s, mm. and it was when they were rebuilding Covent Garden, mm. and the class was set in the city lit, uh, near Covent, Go mm. Covent Garden, and uh, Elizabeth fell over some building rubble, and broke her leg, so she had to go into hospital, then she had to go for convalescence, so she was away for weeks. Mm. And she was in her 70s at the time. And um, so Cecil would come and sit at the back of the class as usual, but he, he could just about leave the class, and he was in a, in a deep state of, of worry and, and sadness that she, she was away. And so I offered to cook for him, and he loved English food. He, he <laughs> loved um, steak and kidney pie, yeah, shepherd's yeah, pie, yeah. cottage pie, yeah. and he loved tabioca pudding, semolina pudding. Right. And so I would cook it for him. Yeah. I said, well, look, you know, shall I bring you round something, you know? So we were quite nearby, and, and I used to go to Porton Square on a Saturday afternoon and drop something off so he could eat it up. Yeah. 
And then when Elizabeth came out of hospital, mm. I just carried on. Yeah. So I would cook something for both of them. Oh, lovely. And that went on for years. Well, that's that's and, a treasure. Uh, yes. Uh, treasure for them. <laughs> and, uh, yes. and I'm sure it was a pleasure for you to feel close to oh, them. Oh, goodness, yes. But, yeah. but also, you know, you have when you have a teacher, though, it's, it's very often good um, not to be too close. Yeah. Um, yes. Because because the the teacher student um, there's a certain distance that has to be mm. held. Yes, I agree um, with you. I think um, whereby you respect your teacher and you 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 don't become too close. Yeah. No. No. Um, it doesn't become too personal. Yeah, I, I think it's that's very interesting. To 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 give a teaching is nothing personal about it because the teacher is is an instrument. Mm -hmm. For um, the teaching that they have acquired and learnt over the years, and they are a channel mm. for the student to receive that. So a personal uh, uh, relationship can come in the way. Yes. Almost. It yes. Can, can be come too close. So it's. I always kept. I always respected Cecil very much, and always. I don't know if I held him in awe, but. Um, I, you know, really respected him. Yeah. So I, I used to have more cosy chats with Elizabeth, his wife. Yeah. And then, and then uh, occasionally we all had tea together, yeah. but it was mostly me and Elizabeth. Tea, as we're having yes. now. I'm, yes. I'm just Ooh, uh, we're sharing that we're with. having, we're going to have a lovely cake in a minute, which uh, sadly isn't available on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, that was just interesting, what you just said about um, the way in which a teacher is an instrument and the instruments that you reverenced, and of course, what you said about the winged um, thoughts, yes. the angels yes. themselves, the, thoughts of the divine, divine mind. mind, being in fact our teachers, to yes. the God teaching us, which yes. is interesting, isn't it? Yes. Now I want to move us, because we are going to have in the Zoom meeting itself some opportunity to look at some of the um, basics of Cecil's um, phrasing, as you call yes. it, um, of how he gave some outlines to expressive marks on a paper, yes. and how that linked to um, a philosophy of mind and of physicality. And the reason I want to raise that is because of the very interesting way you showed, and as we will show uh, when we're in the Zoom meeting after people have watched this interview, yes. um, these these um, marks, which capture something of the human masculine, something of the human feminine, yes. something of the spiritual masculine, something of the spiritual feminine. Yes. And the way in which these are interdependent yes. or put together become very productive, yes. creative. One can't do without the other. Yes. And then it was in our conversation that I raised the very interesting fact that we're at um, for harvest tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's um, uh, service will be a feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Yes. And how some theological um, reflection on Francis has come to identify in him the necessity to have his female counterpart, St. Clair, yes. how they're often pictured in um, um, artistic representation as very complementary. Yes. They almost stand um, in central Italian tradition as one the figure of the sun, the other the figure of the moon. Yes. The fact that they relied upon each other uh, to grow and to be stable and to achieve their pilgrimage, their journey yes. of being um, their being what they believed God to be calling them to. Mm -hmm. And you said you'd never heard really about St. Clair's sort of mirroring of Francis. Not really, no. Mm. No, I've, I've got a lot to learn actually. Well, and, and also it's linking up with um, 
I think it came from um, regarding, um, uh, was I talking about the sun? As yes, you were. You were. As, as a symbol of the pure masculine energy because yeah. it is eternally manifesting. Yeah. So it is a, eternally um, radiating. Yes. And the moon is feminine because it is it receives them it has no light of its own it receives the light of the sun and reflects that light but and in so case the anybody moon is revealed yeah, but in case anybody misunderstands that that's not saying that women are not forceful or powerful or men are not no uh, reflective or passive it's just yes. saying that these two things are found in both men and women both yeah and each person has their own uh, proportion yeah. of those two energies within themselves yes. it's it's not about men and women it's 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 about both energies mm -hmm. within ourselves yeah. and also the whole with withdrawing that one single dot that one single dot that you start with everything is in that dot because then that dot starts to move yeah. and you start to go into say the straight lines of the masculine yeah. and all the curved lines of the feminine yes. and and my diagram will will illustrate okay. that super then do you know i think that's where we leave this introductory uh, interview. Yes. I'm so grateful. I'm really looking forward to eating the apple cake. Yes, so <laughs> And we wish everybody who's watched the interview uh, a really happy time and a good end to the week of creation and hope you can join us on Zoom.